Oops, caught in the act. Do you know that in Los Angeles, you have to be 18 to buy one of these things? And that if I were in New York, as we speak, I might very well be being observed by specially trained police officers with state-of-the-art surveillance equipment. Here in Canada, things are considerably more relaxed, of course, but as you've probably noticed, the cartoon fungus is spreading. The city of Toronto, for one, has hired people to try to clean it all up. But there is a more innovative approach in the works. Rather than trying to erase the presence of graffiti artists altogether, St. Stephen's Community House is trying to redirect their creative energies. The program is called the Graffiti Transformation Project, and its aim is to upgrade crap like this. So listen up, Fune and Fe, your days are numbered. Well, you may be able to clean up the image, but I doubt you could clean up the act. I mean, the dynamic of this stuff comes from the fact that it's illicit. It's on the margins. It's aggressive. I mean, since the beginning of cities, blank walls, since before cities, since we lived in the caves, a blank wall has presented far too great a temptation. Where I'm getting like really sick of, of like the classifications, like of hearing the fine artists and the graph artists. Like I don't really think there's much of a difference. They just use different medium. A lot of times fine artists like paint specifically to get paid or whatever, but graffiti artists just go out and paint because they want to and paint because they love it. When I first started this job, I didn't know very much about graffiti and I wasn't aware of what you could do with like an aerosol can. and. So now I'm starting to do like a photographic essay on graffiti around Toronto. This is just stuff you found on walls. Yeah, these are, um, okay, well these specifically are in an alleyway behind Queen Street. And they're ones that particularly impress me a lot. Especially this one, like, it lo like that looks like oil paint to me. I can't believe that the person did it with a can. It's astonishing. Yeah. And it really challenges people's idea of graffiti necessarily yeah. being something that messes up a city. Yeah. I mean, look totally. at the energy of it. You get what? What makes you so excited about a blank wall? <laughs> you know, you see it and you gotta paint it. When when I first went out painting, it was like yeah. I don't know. It's you can't really ex I can't really explain the feeling okay. that I got from it, but um, I don't know. It was I I really liked it and uh, and I just wanted to go out all the time, you know. And I mean, even sometimes I'm sitting at home and it's like, oh, I gotta paint. Like, I really feel like painting, right? You're bombing anything. And, uh, and I sometimes ask my parents for some cash to go get some paint. Or... You tell them it's for paint? Yeah. yeah. So, so it's not like you're thinking, you gotta go out and destroy something or deface something. No, it's no. like, gotta go out and paint. Yeah, it's, I gotta go out and get my stuff. You know, I went to Greece this summer, and I was delighted to find that some of the archaeological sites still bore traces of ancient graffiti. It's funny how antiquity can lend a certain respectability to even the most scurrilous stuff, although I'm sure the ancient Greeks didn't feel that way any more than we do today. It's an insult to the eye, it's an insult to aesthetics, it's an insult to propriety. But you know, there's something very exciting that goes on, inevitably. There's something about human nature that wants to improve things. It's not just old farts like me who says this stuff's crap. There are young graffiti artists, of course, who are trying to improve it too. And so inevitably, inexorably, we move from the alleys into the art galleries.